All right, uh, so let's uh, let's review where we left off with our Node.js application. So let's see, we had um, created here a Node.js server. Uh, we had loaded the Express library. We had um, also uh, loaded the uh, body parser uh, library so that we can parse JSON data that is being posted in the request. Uh, we had uh, also a configured session management, which we're not using just just now. Uh, we also loaded the Mongoose library so that we can connect to the Mongo database. Um, also notice that we're pointing to a local uh, instance of Mongo. And also we had configured cores, right, so that um, we can allow communication from our Angular application. So notice that we are listing, we're whitelisting our uh, our Angular application, which is running on localhost 4200. Uh, when you deploy this on Heroku, you're going to be you're going to have to instead list here the uh, the URL where the domain where the uh, your Angular is running on Heroku. Um, we also turned on a credential so that we can post username and password and encrypted uh, cookies. Right? But we're not using that just now. And, and here are some controllers that we had already uh, built uh, previously, right? That are exposing. Uh, some endpoints to retrieve the um, list of questions and the list of of, uh, of, uh, of quizzes. Now, both of these implementations are now using a a really really simple implementation that are are just returning arrays of uh, of quizzes. So, for instance, when we ask for all the quizzes, you know, we're going to the service and we are just retrieving right the final quizzes, just retrieving the array. That is loading from a uh, from a file. There it is, right? And, and notice that these 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 are these uh, functions are all synchronous functions, right? They you know they block they they um uh, they block the uh, the thread, right? And just and then just respond immediately, right? So same thing for the controller. The controller notice that once notice that uh, it's going to send the send function blocks waiting for this to return. Right for the array to return, uh, and then once it has the array, then it sends it uh, back to the to the client. So, um, so when when we connect this to a database, uh, the connection to the database is going to be asynchronous. So we're going to have to tweak this a little bit, right? So to um, uh, to use instead an asynchronous uh, API. Uh, same thing for the questions. In the questions. You're muted, Professor. Why am I muted? I don't get it. It uh, like randomly mutes me for some reason. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So here is the uh, server JS where we have our controller. So the we saw that the quizzes uh, is using a synchronous uh, API, right, to retrieve this from a hard coded array. The questions is more or less the same thing. Right, when we retrieve the questions for a particular quiz, right, we see that it's using a synchronous API, right? Meaning it blocks for the array to come back, and once it comes back, then it sends it as a JSON object, uh, because this again the the implementation here is a it's synchronous, right? We uh, we are retrieving the array from a hard coded array right here in a file right here, uh, and uh, and then once we have it. Uh, to retrieve the questions for a quiz, I would just filter out you know those quizzes that belong to a particular question, uh, the particular questions that belong to a particular quiz, uh, and then retrieve only those those questions. Again, it's all synchronous. But when we connect it to the database, right, we're going to have to refactor this a little bit uh, so that it uses asynchronous. All right. All right. So this is the uh, server side. Let's um, let's uh, take a look at how we would uh, go about um, you know. Uh, changing this so that uh, it, it uses a Mongo database instead.